Hello, everybody. Welcome into my latest live video. Today, it's Valentine's Day. It's February the 14th, 2024. My name is Kerry Holzman. Thanks for joining me today as we are going to review another mini PC. And this one, well, you're going to get a little deja vu when you see this, because uh, if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you're going to say, didn't I see this one before? This one's slightly different made by a different company, or I should say branded by a different company, and priced differently, supported differently, and equipped differently. So what's interesting, and we'll talk more about this, is the uh, number of companies that you have an option to buy this PC from. I, I think there's at least four, if not six, completely unrelated companies that brand this unit. And I really like this unit. And I'm not quite sure the quality changes, right? I think it's the same quality. I think whoever's manufacturing it is a, um, like a white label manufacturer. And then companies can, I could buy this in bulk and brand it as mine. If those of you are looking to get into a business, it's, it's that easy to get into business these days. So we're going to take a look at it. And I'll tell you right now, I really like this computer. I think it's good performer. I think it, it's an eye catcher. It's definitely a conversation piece. It doesn't look like other mini PCs out there. And uh, yeah, before we get into that, let me say uh, thank you guys again for joining and thank you to our supporters over at Acronis, Roboform, Instant House Call, and VIP CDK Deals. Each one of these companies, I truly believe, offers a quality value service or software at an unbelievable price. And on top of that, they're giving you, my audience, an exclusive discount. And for, for Roboform, Acronis, and VIP CDK deals, that discount is for the entire year. So if you don't have the money right now, or you're not sure, you're on the fence, there's no, you know, salesmen can be so pressury, right? So much pressure. Buy this, buy it now. What's it gonna take for you to buy this? You don't do that here. I don't do it. I'm simply telling you, if you're interested and you want to save some money and you like the products, Acronis is great for backing up and cloning. Roboform is the single best password manager on the planet, bar none. And for some reason, every time I watch password manager reviews of uh, software, Roboform is snubbed. Why do you suppose that is? Someone, someone replied to me, saying, well, because they aren't paying to be reviewed. And I'm like, you don't pay for a review. You pay for a commercial. If you're paying for a review, that's not a review. And it's not wrong unless you're calling it a review. So it's dishonest. If, if a company is paying for somebody to make a review, that is dishonest. Um, so RoboForm, don't play that. Right. And, and in fact, as far as I know, none of the companies I work with do that. So if you're interested in a great backup software, it's easy to use and can save your bacon. It's you, you, you're not going it, to. It's a really great price. Roboform, 30 percent off. Fantastic. It is probably if I had to choose, like if I had to pick one of these pieces of software between Instant House Call and Roboform and Acronis. <laughs> I don't know how I could pick between them because I need RoboForm to remember all my logins and passwords for me. And I need remote access from Instant House Call to connect to my clients so I can earn the money so I can pay for things like RoboForm. And I need a Cronus to make sure that all of my customer data and my personal data is backed up on a regular basis because when the unexpected happens, it's no big deal for me. It is absolutely, it's a little stressful, but it's not like, oh my gosh, I'm at a dead end and there's nowhere for me to go. All I have to do is get another computer. If let's say, for example, <clears throat> Studio B burns to the ground and I have lost 100% of everything, I haven't. I have offsite backups over at Studio A and vice versa. So if something happens at either location, robberies, uh, Fires, floods, natural disasters, tree falls in the ceiling and collapses down and crushes the computer room. All I'm trying to tell you is 
It's always unexpected. You will not see it coming. But once you have that backup in place, no big deal. It's like, all right, well, we file our insurance claim. We get another computer. I have business. I have customers. My customers don't go away because I can't service them. They'll go somewhere else for their service. So get another computer, restore my backup. I'm up and running in no time. And then on top of that, um, my customers may not even know anything ever went wrong. It's seamless. And it's so affordable. I can't see any reason why not to do it. We're going to have Begauden joining us from Acronis here in the next couple of weeks. And we're going to go over some more features of Acronis. And if you've missed any of that, go through our library. We had Begauden on um, not too long ago, walking through the entire process of downloading the free trial. No credit card is needed on any of this stuff and making your first backup. The backup, everything that we do in that video is free. You get a 30-day free trial, I think, 15 or 30 days with Acronis. RoboForm is free if you only store a couple of passwords, but if you only have a couple of passwords, who needs it? You can install RoboForm on as many computers, phones, tablets, whatever. It's all built in to your license, right? Um, Acronis, you'd get a license for each PC. Instant House Call, one of the most affordable remote access software out there. And it's built with certain tools designed for computer repair technicians. Now, you don't have to be a computer repair technician to benefit from it. It has a 15-day free trial. Try it out. And getting back to my point about Acronis, let's say, for example, you followed that video because you don't have a backup. You don't know how backups are made. This is often the story I hear from the customers. You watch, and just like a cooking show, you click as we click on the same things we do, and you will have a backup. And let's say you don't buy a Cronus. Okay. You don't have to. After your trial ends, you can no longer make any new backups. Now, let's say you put that backup wherever you, whatever, wherever you put the backup, let's say you put that away. You stuck it in a drawer. You forgot about it. Then the unexpected happens. And it doesn't matter if it's a day past your trial or five or 10 years past your trial. As long as you still have that backup, you can restore any Acronis backup with Acronis for free. Think about that. And then when that saves you potentially tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars, you might reconsider just what a value Acronis is and regret not having purchased it so that your backup wouldn't be so out of date. It's for each of you to decide if you already have a backup solution that you're using and, and it's affordable. Great. Not suggesting you move away from that, but it might be worth just taking a look at Acronis and comparing it and deciding for yourself if it's faster, easier, more robust, uh, doesn't bog your system down compared to the competitors. Evaluate that. Whatever you decide is right for you. And if you want to buy it, I just want to save you some money. So it's not a hard sell. I'm just telling you like one friend telling another about some item on sale at Costco. It's nothing like as far as I'm concerned, I'm just trying to help. These are products I actually use and I recommend to my customers. And, you know, when it comes to finding any sort of support here from big corporations, I have a very, <laughs> a very fine filter for them to get through. I don't just take any sponsors and the sponsors have to do something for you guys. They have to offer you a discount. And um, sometimes sponsors want to not play that or sometimes sponsors say, well, we'll pay you more rather than give your audience a discount. I'm like, no, pay me less and make sure my, I know that sounds like a line, but I swear to you, that's true. I have literally told some sponsors Pay me less to offer my, my viewers, I almost called you guys my clients. I treat you like my clients. And uh, some stubbornly say, no, we don't do that. And I say, okay, then we can't work together. And I just won't mention your product. You know, um, that's fine. I'm not going to give them free advertising, right? <laughs> it's kind of disrespectful. In any event, um, that's some of the challenges I face as we're trying to find a way to maintain our independence here, to give you real life reviews, real life opinions from a real life 
computer technician with over 30 years in the industry doesn't make me right. It, it just means that I'm, as far as I'm concerned, real, authentic, genuine, honest. And I feel like too much of that is gone in the world today. Everything's about how things look. It's about appearances. And, and it's about controlling an outcome through video editing that you don't see any mistakes and that everything is always perfect. That's not life. Sorry, life is messy. Life is full of surprises. And that's the way I want to keep it here. And as long as this remains a rarity on the internet, then as far as I'm concerned, that gives me a reason to continue doing it. It's just a matter of finding a way to finance all of it. And so far, we're doing okay. YouTube's been a bit challenging on that side. And I know it's, it's a, um, a never-ending story with me, right? Because the, it's a never-ending battle I face each and every day. And it hasn't gone away. And I just share that with you guys. Not to whine or to complain, but again, for transparency, to let you in behind the scenes about what some of the challenges are to bring this content to you. Otherwise, I could just be one of those YouTubers that sits in a chair and reads the news out loud to you, right? That doesn't cost me anything. And I'm doing somebody else's work. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not doing somebody else's work. Rather, I am simply repeating what somebody else did by reading the article they took the time to write. <laughs> And I'm just reading it to you. Like, you need somebody to read you bedtime stories. Like, you couldn't have just gone and read that article yourself. And maybe already have. I don't know. I don't get what YouTubers are doing when they do that. And I don't get what the viewers are doing who watch it. Here, will you read this book to me, Uncle Kerry? Will you read this website to me, Uncle Kerry? Instead, what I want to do is I want to show you how things go together and why those things are being written. I want to explain it. And I need to demonstrate it in order for that to make sense, at least for me to understand it. And that's how we differentiate this channel from everything else that's out there. There are a few others that also share uh, a, a similar style. Um, my friend Doug Betts, Planet Cryos, Jim KJ3N. Uh, if you enjoy this kind of content, be sure and check them out as well. Looks like we've got a few contributions in the chat. So let me say uh, thank you and uh, give them credit for supporting us, our, supporting our independence here. Les Stevenson with $2 Canadian. Right on. Thank you, Les. Paul O'Brien with two euro. Says he's down in the dump. So, man, well, hopefully I can get your mind off your troubles and distract you for a couple hours today. Paul joins us from Ireland. Always good to see you, my friend. And speak of the devil, there's Planet Cryos with a $2 super chat. He says, just a dude telling another dude, hey. That's all right. You can say happy Valentine's Day to another dude. It's cool. No, no worries. Happy Valentine's Day, Planet Cryos. Kingsman with $19.99 in super chat says, hey, Carrie, quick question. I hope a quick question he hopes <laughs> is there ever a quick there's very rarely a quick answer with me isn't there are power supplies normally a component that can transfer over during the upgrade process of pcs for example my power supply was used when he had an intel i7 4970k was when the intel i see what he's saying the intel i7 4790k was recent when it was new and just released, that's how old his power supply is. And so if he upgrades that to a different motherboard, different processor, can he reuse the power supply? Well, the connectors haven't changed, right? But power requirements might change depending on what you had, how many years have gone by, and what you're upgrading to. I'd say if your power supply is 500 watts or greater and you are not running a discrete graphics card, you're fine. Although any part that you carry over to your new build statistically is likely going to be the first part that fails at some point in the future. Like if you were to replace everything with new, likely you're going to have an eight year build on a modern PC build. And when I say eight years, I mean minimum. But if you start pulling old hard drives or old power supplies, or you want to reuse any parts because those parts already have some of their life gone, this, the statistical, 
likelihood is that those parts will be the first parts that fail on your new system. Now, if you have a discrete graphics card that you're adding to your new build, depending on what model it is, you likely may need a 750 or 850 watt power supply minimum. And if your old power supply is that, it'll be fine. At the same time, if the old power supply you bought was a top of the line power supply, so for example, Corsair, EVGA, NZXT, a few others, they have 10 year warranties on the high tier power supplies. And if that's the case, that power supply is still under warranty. But if you bought the cheapest thing you could buy, then the odds of that um, being a good, reliable choice for you are diminished. But there's no, I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't tell you what life is left in an older power supply. There's a lot of variables, including the environment, and if you've maintained it, dusted it, or if it's been suffocating for years because the filters have never been cleaned. Um, but if you have the minimum wattage requirements for, let's say, a modern build, you want 500 watts. And if you're going to add a graphics card, as I mentioned, 750 to 850, if it meets that, you'll probably be okay for a while. And if it was a top-tier power supply, maybe for the whole life of the computer, but if it was a middling or, you know, you bought it because it was on sale kind of thing, then chances are you'll probably be replacing it when it fails. And when it fails, it could possibly take out your brand new components or some of them. Is that a risk worth taking? I mean, that's entirely up to you. It could be just fine. But in short, the technical answer is if the wattage is there, there's nothing that's stopping you from doing that. It'll work. How long? I don't know. Is that a quick answer? I don't think it was. Davis Parsons contributes $10. He said he's been using Acronis for years. His local backup drive is attached into his main computer and he's never had a problem with it. It just works. Yeah, and that's what I need when I'm in business servicing customers. I can't have one customer monopolize my time. Other customers waiting will eventually take their business somewhere else. So I need to help people quickly. I like to call myself like the McDonald's of techs in the sense that, or at least my business, in the sense that I'm trying to offer a quality value service that's quick and inexpensive, uh, you know, compared to like what Geek Squad would charge or and how much time they would take. I'm fast. I'll get it done. I'll get it fixed right the first time. I'll get it fixed cheaper for any than anybody else around here is going to charge. I probably have more experience than any other working technician in Phoenix or um, regular desktop computers because most people, I'll be honest with you, most people move up. <laughs> I never moved up. They move up into like network administration, server stuff, even maybe network architecture, cybersecurity. I just love working on computers. And so uh, I'm kind of an anomaly, sort of the godfather of PC repair at this point, now that I've been doing this over 30 years. You won't find many people still doing it that long. I'm not the only one, don't get me wrong. Doug Betts is in a similar situation. and. There's just not that many. The bulk of computer repair are a lot of younger people and they, you know, they want to move up. They want to, and who can blame them, right? They don't want to do computer repair their whole life. And who knows, maybe computers go away and everything's going to be tablets and smartphones and things that are exceptionally complicated to open and very, very tiny little parts. And some cannot even be opened without breaking them. So, and, and as the components get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, it's getting cheaper for a consumer to just replace something out of warranty than to pay somebody to fix it and be without it and hope it's fixed right the first time. And if it isn't, take it back and continue with the inconvenience endlessly until the problem's resolved or until you give up and go buy the new one anyway, spending money on the repair that you're never gonna get back. So it, I've been very lucky that that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> but you know, with the uh, advent of these mini PCs and their popularity, there's not a whole lot of repair we can do on these, at least nothing that would make any sense financially, because when you're done paying for the labor, you probably could have bought a new mini PC, had it faster, having a new warranty and having an upgrade. So it can be a difficult business, at least here in the United States.
So thank you, Davis, and thank you, Kingsman, for your contributions. Let me just keep scrolling through here. Kingsman says he's got an EVGA 800 watt. So EVGA has a Series A, Series B, Series C kind of C, uh, power supplies. And so, you know, if it's modular, semi-modular, what was the warranty on it when you bought it? Um, they sell cheap 800 watt power supplies and they have expensive 800 watt power supplies. You can kind of tell from the 80 plus rating. If it's 80 plus white or 80 plus bronze, it's a cheaper one. If it's 80 plus gold or above, so platinum, titanium, then that's a, a high tier top shelf power supply. EVGA does make good power supplies regardless, but we're just talking statistics at this point. Hey, there's our friend Frankie B in the chat room saying hello. And Frankie gave a uh, super chat yesterday, right after the broadcast ended. He missed it. I, I missed being able to say thank you to him. So thank you for yesterday's super chat, Frankie B. And I'm sorry the, the timing was just a little off. There is a delay because these are live. There's a delay from when I speak to when you hear me. Now, if you're current and up to date, it should be about four seconds. But if I'm right in the process of saying goodbye, and then you fire a question off to me or a contribution, please understand that I'm not snubbing you. It means that I didn't get to see that because of the delay until after I already ended the broadcast. So, but don't let that discourage you from asking questions or, you know, just be aware of there's a chance I might not see it while we're live. That's all. But I do try to keep a note of it up here so I can acknowledge say thank you as I always do. Red Rebel joins us, says hello. There's Netfreak saying hello. All right. Oh, there's, there's Mara joining us already. That was earlier than I thought. Okay, so full disclosure. The first time I reviewed this PC, I bought it using channel funds. I bought it from AliExpress, and I knew I was taking a risk when I was buying it from AliExpress, that I wasn't gonna get any kind of support, I was not likely going to be able to return it, and it was likely going to take three weeks to arrive. And I think with AliExpress, they say they have a 15-day, some sellers say they have a 15-day uh, guarantee that you're gonna receive it, or you'll get a $1 discount off your next purchase. <laughs> Oh boy. Now this unit comes from a different company and uh, they're called geekbuying.com, geekbuying.com. Let's go take a look at the site. And they sent this to us for free in exchange for a review. So, you know, I really appreciate that as we try and keep expenses down here uh, and still bring you unique content that we have something here on the desk and we're not looking at websites. Like, again, some other content creators will just pull up websites and, Again, they're just reading stuff to you like it's a bedtime story. I don't get that. But let's, uh, let's take a look at the geek buying website. And the reason uh, I want to draw your attention to it is if you're in the market for a mini PC, they sell a bunch of them, different manufacturers all across the board. There's a wide variety to choose from. It's not like if you go to a specific manufacturer of mini PCs website, they only have their brand. But Geek Buying has a bunch of different brands. So this brand, we've never seen or heard of this brand before. They're called T-Bow. And this model they're calling an MN78. And they're calling it a gaming mini PC. It's got RGB lighting. It's the same processor as the other unit that I got from AliExpress, which by the way, the other unit arrived just fine. It was in good condition and I didn't need any support. So, you know which was kind of what I figured when I ordered it, but uh, you never quite know, it's still a little gamble. So we're running the Ryzen 7 7840HS, just like the last one. It's an eight core processor with 16 threads. It'll crank up to 5.1 gigahertz. But on this unit, instead of 16, we get 32 gigs of RAM, and instead of 500, we get one terabyte of M.2 SSD storage. Uh, Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2 are the same. It does have USB 4, which supports DisplayPort output out of that USB 4. 
and will support three monitors at 4K 60 Hertz simultaneously. We get that one USB 4 port, we get two USB 3.2 ports, we get two USB 2.0 ports, we get one HDMI port, and we get two LAN connectors on the back. It's pretty well equipped. Now, you might be seeing this price and say, ooh, 700 bucks. But when you first go to the website, it should give you a pop-up of, a, I think it's a $60 off coupon code. And then it says 2% off for a new user. There's get coupons. Look on the site. This says 688 if you're running their app. There's different discounts depending on how you approach it. And of course, we've, this says EU for the plug. I need US for the plug. And when I select US for the plug, prices come down a little bit. But um, you should be able to pick this up right around 600 maybe a little so again this has the 32 gigs of ram and the one terabyte of storage and i think i paid around 550 for the version that had 16 gigs you know half of the ram and half of the storage so it's you know a reasonable markup for the additional ram and storage and there is a 16 512 version they sell I want to save a little money yeah, that seems about right because when you add the discount codes, that'll come down a bit. And then of course, if you pay with uh, PayPal, there's another two and a half percent discount with that as well. So that's pretty neat. Plus you have the security and peace of mind of PayPal protections, just in case you're a little skeptical of a seller you've never heard of before. And again, you can look at their best sellers. You can go up here. If, you're, if this isn't your cup of tea, you can see they have a variety of things besides mini PCs. And you can also see different models of, like you've never heard of T-Bow, let's say. T-Bow makes, or at least brands, puts their brand on more than just this one computer. They're not like a one-trick pony. So just bear that in mind and decide for yourself. Uh, Google reviews and see what people are saying about uh, t -Bow. You see there's a Valentine's Day 10% off coupon code. And uh, let me just show you the PC. And I will tell you, as I mentioned before, there are a number of different companies. I think Ace Magic is doing one of these. And uh, there's at least three others. A Z-Box, t -Bow, so that's three. There's at least two more um, that are putting their name on it. And so their pricing will vary depending on who it is, the support will vary, but the product is essentially the same except for how it's equipped, right? So I wanna set your expectations properly. You can see the box it comes in is very generic. There's, there's nothing that tells us what's in here other than mini computers. So you can see they can save money if the mini computers they're selling will fit in this box, as many of them will. They don't have to spend the extra money to make a different box for every mini PC. You'll see that like with the bigger manufacturers, they'll, we don't see the same box being used, for example, at least I haven't really noticed Minis Forum using the same box. When the new PC comes out, it's often in a unique color, um, a distinct box for that product. And you better believe you're paying a little extra for that. It's not free. So if you can reuse sort of a generic box, I know sometimes I go to the grocery store or uh, a market, and they have bags, the, the grocery bags just say thank you. They don't have the name of the company. Or I've gone to like a mom and pop pizza shop and they have this generic pizza box that does not have the name of their company. It just says like fresh hot pizza. It's, it's very generic and it just costs less for them to buy those rather than having them custom printed. And that means they can either make more money or they can charge you less since their expenses are lower but it doesn't mean the pizza's not any good. And you know, the grocery bags that just say thank you on them without the store name doesn't mean the stuff you're buying and putting in the bag is of a less quality. You're just saving some money for something you're likely just gonna throw into the trash anyway. Some companies like Apple will make a big deal out of the unboxing experience and they spend a lot of money studying how the box opens and oh my gosh, like the, the emotional response somebody gets when they 
open the product. Maybe I'm old. Well, I guess there's not a maybe. But, I mean, it's a momentary feeling, right, as you open the box, whatever that experience is. But what you're after is what's in the box. How many people want to keep the little, give somebody a box of chocolates in a heart-shaped box? Once all the chocolates are eaten, what are you saving the box for? You know what I mean? So you're, we're after what's inside. And that's what we're going to do now. I will tell you the other thing that's great is there's not a lot of fluff. All right. In order to keep prices down, you got your instruction manual. You've got a piece of foam to protect it in shipping. Now, this was wrapped in plastic. And I've taken the plastic off and I did all the Windows updates and made sure this works and everything is fine with it so that we're not going to be here all day. Um, but let me bring it up to the, uh, the camera so you guys can see a close up all the details on this is really, really nice. So we've got the front of it here on this side, power switch, headphone jack, which supports uh, speakers or microphone or a headset. There's our two USB type A 3.2 ports and our USB 4 port right there. You see it's got a little number four on there. And then this button right over here, this controls our RGB lighting to cycle through uh, specific colors or a rotating color. The sides are pretty much nothing going on there, but great ventilation. The back of it, as described, we have, it looks like a 2.5 gig and a one gig LAN port. We have display port out, HDMI port out, two USB 2s. These are a great thing to plug your keyboard and mouse into. And this right here is our power plug. This is powered by USB type C. And that means that if you were traveling and you brought a USB C adapter that had enough power to power this, you could use that to charge your electric shaver, your phone, when you're traveling, that one power adapter can charge all of your portable devices that charge with USB-C. There's even monitors, and I've shown you in the past, where the monitor can, you, you plug the monitor into the wall, and if you um, look at the specifications of the monitor and buy one that has a USB-C port, that USB-C port can power this computer, and that USB-C port also sends video to the monitor. And if you're connecting with a keyboard and mouse wirelessly and you're on Wi-Fi or Bluetooth for your keyboard and mouse, for example, and Wi-Fi for your internet, you just have one cable and you're online. So imagine traveling with that and just using the HDMI and plug it into the, in the uh, hotel TV, which isn't going to have a Type-C USB port. So you'll need to bring your USB-C adapter, which you would have anyway to charge your, I don't know, maybe your shaver, your toothbrush. Right? You're going to use it anyway, hopefully. The top of the unit is really cool. So it's got like this laser engraved cyberpunk. <laughs> and it's got these like CD shaped screws that come out. And we have a giant fan right here. It's an RGB fan that's rotating, but it kind of gives an illusion that the lights are or around the lid when in fact the lights are on the fan. And you, if the lighting bothers you, you can turn it off. And they make it in two colors, uh, in the dark gray color, like what we have here and had before, and in a white color. So uh, price can vary just based on the color, believe it or not. Out of curiosity in the chat room, how many of you like this design? Is it just me? I think it's, I think it's one of the coolest mini PCs. Now in the box, say there's not a lot of fluff we have a box and, and that's pretty much it and in this box we have our USB-C brick which is pretty big much bigger than your cell phone charger but it would work to charge your cell phone it's telling you and I want to show you the power output on this if the camera will focus 100 watts, 5 amps. That's pretty hefty. So I think the monitor I have will only output up to 65 watts. So the monitor I have likely wouldn't power this particular mini PC. But this mini PC could power 
as I mentioned, charging up your phone, possibly a, things you would have that are electronic when you travel. Having a, an adapter that's too powerful, it's no big deal to step it down to power lower power things. But trying to use a lower power adapter to power higher power things doesn't work. So anyway, we've got our power adapter, and then it just has a, um, a clover leaf style plug there. Pretty common with like laptops, for example. And then what else do we have? Well, we've got that plug, obviously. And we've got a short USB cable. Oh, that may not be a short one. That, that may be about a five foot USB cable. There's no Visa mounting bracket on this. Um, it's meant to be seen. It's not meant to be hidden behind a monitor. So, you know, they do make other models if that's what you're after. And then, of course, we have our user manual, which I will bring up to the camera and show you. And that shows a picture of the white version as well. And the user manual is, is pretty, pretty short. And of course, printed on both sides. What's of particular interest to me is how that opens up. How you can upgrade the RAM and get access to the storage. And I don't know if we can put a two and a half inch drive in there or not. I, I don't. Like if, if I wanted to add storage these days to a mini PC, I wouldn't want to cram a two and a half inch drive inside of what is a pretty hot little area. And I think this fan is so big, there's probably not USB uh, enclosure. Or let me rephrase, you don't need a USB enclosure for a solid state drive. You could take the same drive that you were planning on putting inside of here and buy an $8 USB adapter and then just plug it into that back USB 4 port or the USB a type A port that's back there. And you would get really good speeds. You know, you probably get a thousand megabytes per second out of that. And if it's just a standard two and a half inch SATA, you'll likely get the exact same performance, which is around 550 megabytes per second, whether it's internal or external. And it's very easy to swap it out. So for me personally, I don't, I don't put two and a half inch drives in many PCs for those reasons. But I'm going to guess, just by looking at it, I can't imagine where one would fit in here. Now, we can take the cover off of this and take a look. Why not? Mike Collins says, that's the coolest looking mini PC I've seen. You know what? I had the same response. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. I hope it's not a dog. Right? I hope it's not the uh, Plymouth Prowler. Remember that car? Chip Foos designed it. It's a beautiful car, but then they underpowered it. They put a tiny little engine in it. So you had this really fast looking hot rod with a meager little 200 horsepower engine in there. Randy Roblowski with a dollar. 99 in super chat right on thank you randy john williams says it looks great john williams yesterday said his uh uh his cpu was overheating he was getting to 100 degrees celsius he had to leave us during the live session Peter was gonna shut down he was getting so hot and he was wondering if his liquid cooler was going bad on his it's like an 8400 cpu which isn't not a hot cpu and i advised him i said you know, hey, if you're still watching, you don't need a liquid cooler. And yeah, it's probably dead after four years. Just go get yourself the original air cooler or go buy a Mugen 5 and pop it on there and you'll never deal with this ever again. So the next day he let me know via Facebook. He said, hey, thanks for the advice. I just slapped the stock fan back on it. It's hovering around 40 some odd degrees Celsius. If it, been, if it would have been built that way to begin with, you wouldn't have, somebody wouldn't have spent the extra money, buy a cooler, a liquid cooler, 
that you didn't need that would four years down the road break and need to be replaced. If the stock cooler was just put on it to begin with, you would never would have experienced this. And you know, ignorance is bliss. You wouldn't know that you avoided a problem because <laughs> you never experienced it. That's the hard part about trying to get people on board with these concepts is if something doesn't happen, how do you prove that it would have? It's just, it's just, it's statistics. The likelihood of a failure on a liquid cooler is much greater than the likelihood of the cool, uh, an air cooler. So unless you absolutely need one or you're going after a certain aesthetic, why spend money you don't need to spend for something that's going to give you a headache down the road? Again, I'm in business to make money and to have happy customers. So everything I do has to financially make sense. But sometimes emotions are involved. Sometimes somebody just wants it because they want it. Okay. And then when it causes a problem, you remember. You remember why you did that. And when you're angry and frustrated that now the computer doesn't work, that's because of the decision you made or somebody made when it was being built. So I'm trying to think that far ahead. When I'm building a system for a customer, I'm thinking ahead years. It's like a chess game thinking several moves ahead. It's not like a checkers game where it's just impulsive. All right, let me get a small screwdriver out. I haven't had one of these apart before, so I'm kind of curious what it looks like in there. I mean, I know it's gonna be a big fan. That much I know. Oh, and these are torques. I didn't realize that. That kit isn't gonna work for me. But this kit of tools likely will be fine. This is one of those iFixit tool kits. It's a smaller one. And we do have some, some torques up here, some security torques down here. That one eh, looks like it's a, about a T5. No, it's bigger than a T5. Is it a 6.5? It's smaller than a 6.5. How's that? All right. Hmm. You'd think it'd be one or the other. Uh, let's see if these security bits will fit. This is what, a J1? No. Take it back. This is a TR8. TR8. It's a little loose. I could make it work, but I could strip the screw. This is a TR9. Still a little loose. This is a TR10. Perfect. Goldilocks has found the just right size. All right. John says his computer's working great today. The all-in-one was installed when he bought the computer. So yeah, I was, I was trying to be careful to be mindful that you may not have built this. Um, so I, sometimes I, what I say isn't, isn't meant to be literal, but it is often heard literally. So I'm trying to be more aware of how people might interpret my words. So I apologize if I've implied that you made that decision. As I mentioned, it could have been somebody else that made that decision. But I'm glad you fixed it, and thank you for following up with us. Look at the size of this screw. Holy cow. You don't want to lose one of those. I don't know where you'd find a replacement. I have to say, I've never seen a mini PC use a screw like this whether it's the, the head of the screw, which is so wide, and it looks like a compact disc, or even just the length of the shoulder, because it's got very short threads. Let me bring this up to the camera. You can see it close up. This is very different.
Okay, I think, there we go. So that's the cover off. And the cover is um, pretty sparse on the inside here, right? And it looks like these little plastic uh, decorative pieces are being held in by a couple of screws here. So that shows you that I suppose if you were wanting to, oh, and it's on all four corners, I can see screws on each side. Um, if you were wanting to modify this cosmetically to have your brand have a distinct look, that's something that can be swapped out and then it can differentiate you from other manufacturers that are also branding these. Of course, that will add a cost. And then if you're competing against others, the customer tends to be drawn towards the lowest price and few will appreciate the accents that are different between the models. One of the things I like about this computer is how quiet it is. And one of the reasons it's so quiet is it's got a giant fan on it. The smaller a fan is, the faster it has to turn to move you know, the same quantity of air. So this thing can be quite relaxed. It's got a pretty beefy heat sink on it. And it's probably one of the largest fans I've ever seen on a Mini, and this should be normal. And the ventilation on it, you know, you see all the holes in the lid, you see all the holes. Well, the holes are actually not on this half, uh, except down here. This is where the CPU fan is. So the CPU fan and often the, um, the CMOS battery are under there. And it does appear that we have what could be I'm not quite sure what those brass mounting points are for. M3, it says. I don't know what M3 is. And we've got the label identifying this PC, the model MN78. And of course, that's a sticker that goes on that each manufacturer, not manufacturer, but each, each company that wants to brand it will create their own serial number. And, you know, that's an easy thing to, you know, you buy the PCs and they don't come with these. You have these printed out and stuck on there, or you make a deal with the manufacturer to do that for you. All right, let's see what's under here. If I can figure out how this comes off. The fan has three screws attaching it to the heat sink. In many ways, anytime you see a fan attached to a heat sink, like on a graphics card, the screws are located underneath the blades, but we should not need to remove the fan. We can keep the fan attached and just take these four screws out, it should release that giant heat sink. And let's see what that's covering. Hopefully our RAM and our storage are right there, and that would be relatively easy to get into, providing you have that, what did I say this was, a Torx 10? A TR-10? That's a very small screw. You don't want to lose it. Oh, you know what? Is that gonna at least the heat sink, that little tiny screw? I feel like that's not right. It's one way to find out. Martin Erdson says the M3 is the fine threaded screw for CD ROM and two and a half inch hard drives. Hmm. Well, they're spaced out too far. What they use those for. I wonder if it's for an optional visa mount. But again, why would you buy something so beautiful and then hide it behind the screen or mount it under a desk? Oh, this is just the RGB frame. Oh, I see. So, so as you know, I'm assuming you know, RGB requires a separate power connector. It's one of the reasons I loathe RGB is at least a lot of it because then you have to run two cables for every fan. Power to the fan and then uh, power in controlling the RGB. Especially if you want it to synchronize with all the other RGB, it has to be able to communicate to synchronize. So what we have here is simply just an RGB ring, and that's just connected down onto the main board. And then we're left with the fan. Now we shouldn't have to remove that. There should be a way to simply Oh, let me get my glasses and see if I can figure this out. I'm usually pretty good at taking stuff apart. It's a hidden skill. Now, is that ring holding the heatsink in place? 
feels like it's on there pretty, pretty good. Wouldn't think that that was holding it. But something is holding it down. Based on what I'm seeing here, I'm going to assume, better or for worse, that there are four screws on a board that the heatsink is attached to. And that is way too shallow to be where our RAM and storage are. So I don't know what that is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these screws back before I forget where they go. Isn't this so much better when it's live and you can see somebody figure it all out rather than they do that and edit all that fun stuff out and just show you as though as though they're the original engineer who built it. Oh yeah, this just comes off like this as though, you know, it's super easy and obvious. A lot of things are obvious when you've already familiarized yourself with them. But when you're doing it for the first time, and especially since we don't really have much in the way of documentation, and even if we did, I don't want to read it. That takes the fun out of it for me. Uh, I'm going to take these screws out that are in each corner. There's little black screws here in each corner. So there's one. Oh, and those are self-tappers. Interesting. Be careful when you put those back in. You don't want to over-tighten them or you will strip the threads out and then you'll never get them tight ever again. So each corner here. Screwdriver does not want to fit into the head of that one. I don't know why that one's different. So I'm going to use a different tip because I don't want to strip these screws out. Again, they're self-tappers. Okay. Easy. Now, if I lift this out, now there are cables attached here. So I want to be very, very mindful when I lift this out. Here we go. It looks like the whole thing is going to come out. All right, that's pretty cool. So usually you have to pull away on the plastic on one side. And then once you can get one side lifted, the whole mini PC. This is pretty unusual that they did this. Something seems to be holding it in on the front. I'm just not catching whatever that is. The back is coming out quite easily. And usually, once you can free the one side or the other, then you can slide it. Hmm. Am I doing this the hard way? What I'm guessing, what I'm starting to have second thoughts about, is if there might be screws underneath these rubber feet. Because a lot of times on these mini PCs, the way that you access your RAM and storage is from the top. But as I mentioned, the if we bring this up to the, let me bring this up to the camera. The, uh, this giant heat sink here, look how close it is to that circuit board. There's no room between that heat sink and that circuit board to put your M.2 drive or to stack two RAM modules. So I think it's on the other side, but as I start to pull this away, something is holding it in on the front and you don't want to use brute force. You'll break it and that's no way to enjoy your new toy. So um, I'm wondering if there's a way to get at it from this side. Let me just take a peek underneath these feet and see what's there. There are screws underneath the rubber feet. Okay, so if you want to get at this, to do RAM or storage upgrades, it looks like, unless you want to do it the hard way, unlike other mini PCs, you're gonna come in from the bottom. That's quite unusual. And I don't have a problem with that. It's different, I like different. You can see the exposed screw right there underneath the rubber foot. I just wish it wasn't underneath. You know how I am about that. Put a hole in the middle of the rubber foot. The problem when they use these rubber feet is if you, or getting into the computer, let's just say more than you probably should, they'll stop sticking. The feet won't, won't stick anymore. Sometimes you go to pull the rubber foot off and the sticky part remains on the mini PC instead of on the foot. 
And then you're going to have to get creative with how you want to restick those rubber feet, getting your own glue, or I guess you could leave them off entirely, or maybe you could go to a craft store and buy some sticky rubber material and custom cut it, or buy a generic rubber foot of approximately the same. It's just a hassle. And, and you know, I prefer that the rubber feet stay on. Now, if you're taking them off for the first time and it's a new computer, it's probably no problem. But if you're taking them off for the 15th time, or you're taking them off for the first time on a five or six year old computer, don't be surprised if you have difficulty getting them back on again. All right, so getting us to the top is really, there's no point in taking the top off. Those big screws, they're really just decorative. And the reason I think that they're Torx is they're telling you, you don't need to be in here. That makes sense to me, unless you need to replace this fan. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and leave the top off just because it. See what this thing actually looks like when it's naked. Like a geek pervert, I guess. All right, these are also self tappers. That's interesting. They're a lot smaller. Carrie Holzman's mini PCs exposed. She must be 18 years of age to view this content. Now that should require very little effort for me to take it. You saw how I struggled before, right? There should be no struggle here. Now when I pull the same way to separate, I hope, I hope. <laughs> something is still, something's still grabbing me on this side. So I can't help but wonder if maybe I need to start taking it uh, removing it from the other side first. It's likely due to these buttons. But I was hopeful that this side is easier for me. That I could um, negotiate that out. And I've never done this before. Okay, so for this model of PC, I'm not familiar. If I've done this like in a corporation that has dozens of whatever it is you're working on, um, you can work on it in your sleep, but for the first time, yeah, it can be a little bit of a challenge. And that's why I like to share that discovery process with you here. Pete wants to know if I think mini PCs are the future and towers are going to be obsolete. I, I mean, I don't know. I have no idea. You know, there's always an enthusiast market. There's always the gaming market. There's some rumor that Microsoft is going to stop making the Xbox. And do we think that gaming is going to be restricted to portable devices like phones or tablets? Or will gaming find a resurgence? They no longer do the E3 gaming show in Los Angeles. That was always a big deal. They don't do it anymore, but that tells you that that whole industry is starting to fade. Is it going to get worse? Will it recover? Um, people also use towers for servers. They also use them for high-end, you know, CAD workstations. So I don't think they'll ever go away 100%. But as to the general consumer, they've already started in that sense. But most computers in businesses are still, you know, your average Dell or HP, and they sell hundreds of millions of those to corporations around the world every year, somewhere around 300 million. Wrap your brain around that. But that's computers in general, laptops. Um, if you look at Dell sales for 2023 and HP sales, just those two companies alone, year after year, it's a couple hundred million. So even if that slowed down still a lot <laughs> but we'll see Gil garcia says he likes this mini pc yeah i'm really a fan i why have a big tower if you don't need one some people want to have 27 hard drives in their computer you're not going to do that on a mini pc some people want to fill slots with added sound cards and gadgets again it's not an option you're going to have on a mini pc 
and some people want to do a bunch of upgrades and you're going to be pretty limited to just RAM storage in your Wi-Fi card. That's pretty much it. And then if it burns out on you, apart from changing a CMOS battery, there's not really much more. Oh, and a fan. Unless you are a skilled electronics diagnostics technician, there's, there's likely um, not much you're going to be able to do to fix it. And if you were to take it to a professional, it would likely, that would be because you've already had it to a point where it's no longer in warranty. And the cost of labor, at least here in the United States, would, would be likely close to or exceeding the cost of a new unit. And of course, a new unit would be faster, more modern than the older unit. So you could, instead of repair it, replace it with something new under warranty that's upgraded. So not much in the way of business for me to repair these other than if there's an operating system issue, right? If there's a configuration issue. Or if these power supplies burn out, these are easy to find. The manufacturers of the mini PCs in general don't make the power bricks. This power brick is made by a company called Hunt Key. So you could go and, you know, Google that and probably find one for sale uh, on Amazon or on eBay, to name just a couple places, maybe Etsy, maybe Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist. But generally speaking, if I had to find one of these, I would be looking for this exact adapter with this exact model number in my Google search. And then when I saw products popping up that were a different make, let's say, but they look the same, I just check the the uh, voltage and the amperage. So this one is 20 volts at five amps. So as long as that matches and it's a USB-C end, you're good to go. Then it's just a matter of shopping for the cheapest price or the best warranty or the fastest shipping, whatever's important to you. John Bolin said, the mad scientist is at it again. Mini PCs are really something. It just proves that technology is getting smaller and smaller and Ryzen 7 can be a monster if you want it to be. Well, don't forget Ryzen 9. Douglas Burchell with $5 the Super Chat says, here's my late fee. Great to be here. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Right on. Thank you, Douglas. All right, let me, I'm still trying to figure out how this comes off. Something up here on the front of the unit is holding us in. And I don't know what it is. You would think being able to access the storage in the RAM would be easy. Usually there's a, in a case like this, there'd be a plate that comes off. Oh. Maybe, maybe this all isn't one piece. Maybe this piece comes up. Hmm. Hmm. What could I use to pry that with? I don't know. Sure looks like that might be a separate piece. It's molded so perfectly, it looks like all of this is one. But that would make a lot more sense if this piece came up. But if this piece came up, it'd be nice if you know, like B-Link gives us that pull tab. If there was something for us to grab and pull, that would certainly give me more confidence that it comes off that way. But it can't be this hard. In fact, let me bring it up to the camera and show you. I'm starting to see something now that I'm looking a bit closer. When you look at this, it looks like it's one piece. But if you look right here, you can actually see through. So I don't need to be pulling this whole piece out. It's difficult and it's not supposed to be. If it's that difficult, you're doing it wrong. That's just life in general, okay? If you're really struggling with anything in life, try another approach. Stop being stubborn and forcing it. Things, if you're doing it right, should flow easily. Um, with a few exceptions, obviously, if you're trying to get off an old rusted bolt that's 20 years old on the 
You know what I'm saying? But in general, especially on new equipment, don't use force. If it looks like it's fighting you, you are, you've got to change your approach or stop and have somebody else do it for you or risk breaking your, your new thing. And if you break it, that's not a warranty issue. You did that. That's not their fault you did that. All right. I want to get something, uh, a little spudger, see if I can pry that up. That would make life a whole lot easier. And I didn't really look closely at those directions I, so, I showed you, but it didn't look like they were very detailed, but maybe they show this. So I'm going to go right into that slot with my iFixit spudger. They're not a sponsor here. It's just if you're wondering what tools I use. And look at how much easier that was. <laughs> now I know. All right. This is quite interesting because So this thing's all loose now that I took those screws out. I think I want to put those screws back in just so this doesn't surprise me and fall out, right? That'll be the Murphy's Laws. I'm struggling with it, but, but once I, I'm not trying, then it'll just come out on its own. So we're going to keep that secured, that circuit board. Those, this whole top half did not need to come off, but it's kind of interesting to see what's behind it nonetheless. Um, yeah, on many, many PCs, the, I'm trying to think, the CPU, it depends what we're looking at. Some mini PCs, you're going to access RAM and storage from the top. Like uh, we had that minis forum with the lid, you push down on the lid and it opens up and you have access to your RAM and storage. And in that case, your CPU is located on the bottom. On this PC, the CPU is located on the top, and this tells you this is the CPU fan. Well, no wonder why this thing runs quiet and fast. That's the CPU fan. Holy cow. Realizing that, that impresses me. Okay, so when we look inside, this is how it came stock. I have not modified, I've never opened this. We've got name brand, top tier manufacturer RAM in there, and it's dual channel. We have a cooling fan right here. I'm not quite sure what that's for. And we have our, whatever NVMe they sent us. A lot of times it's Kingston. Not sure who makes this one yet. And easily accessible, and it's got a heat sink attached with a rubber band. So if you wanted to switch that out, you should move the heatsink over to your new drive unless it comes with one. What I don't see is any ability to plug in a two and a half inch drive. And again, I, I'll give you a couple different angles. Is that a CMOS battery there? And usually, usually the Wi-Fi adapter is underneath the M.2 drive. And you can usually tell by just looking for the antenna wires which look like they might be right down there. It's hard to say without taking the M.2 out. But isn't that great that they've got a fan cooling this area? What I said when I, and this is just a little plastic frame, by the way. We can take this screw out right here. And it looks like this frame. Oh, it looks like we're missing. There's a screw missing. There's supposed to be two there. You know what? Ignorance is bliss. If I had never opened this, I mean, clearly it's just there to hold it in place. But uh, if we take that one screw out, and again, keep in mind that there's a, fa a fan attached. So don't pull on this too much because you might, you might just pull that wire right off for that fan and then you're not going to have a working fan. And see, something's kind of holding, something is holding me in here. See that? It's almost coming out. Now, I don't see any reason why you would need to take this plastic frame out. It looks like 
This is some kind of locking mechanism right here. Use my spudger. See if I can get around it. Yep. And remember, you've got a wire attached. So don't just yank on this thing or you might break that wire going to that fan. Let that dangle. And here, you get a much better look. And yes, I can see the Wi-Fi card underneath that M.2 drive. See it? Right there. Um, so very easily upgradable if I wanted to turn this into Wi-Fi 7. If I want to put an 8 terabyte NVMe in there, I could. If I want to put 64 gigs of RAM, this is uh, DDR5, 6600 speed RAM. Suddenly that price is starting to make more sense. There's our CMOS battery right there, easily accessible. Overall, not too bad. What caught my eye when I took the lid off, if you were wondering why I was like, huh. This lid has these holes here. And those are for a two and a half inch drive. And it actually says HDD, though the motherboard itself does not seem to have any SATA connectors. So it looks like uh, a manufacturer could modify this if they didn't have this frame. I'm gonna guess, I'm just making some guesses here. If they didn't have this frame, or at least if you, let's say you sacrifice this fan, you'd have a place for a two and a half inch drive to go. But I think when this piece is in, this was on this way. When that's back in there, um, that fan is almost, it's not quite flush with the edge. And then when we put that cover back on, right here, it won't sit down if you've got a two and a half inch drive in there. It, it won't be flush anymore. But again, I would just plug an external drive in if that was a concern. All right, let me put this back together. Let me turn it on. Let me show you how beautiful it is when it lights up. And again, you can turn the RGB off using the button on the front. You don't have to deal with any software. And let me show you how freaking fast it is and listen to how quiet it is. Now, I can't remember which way I took this off. <laughs> oh boy, did it go on this way or did it go on this way? I'm gonna guess that the sticker was towards the back of the unit. That's the way I would have done it. I really think it matters. I just want to make sure that the fan's got ventilation here. And then we can put the screws back in here. Don't over tighten these screws. As I mentioned, they're self tappers. So you want to pretty much make them snug and don't take it any further than that. They're pretty shallow. They don't go in that far. But you definitely want the screws flush so the rubber feet will sit back flush. That's the other thing I don't like about having to take these rubber feet off to access that. Not a fan. Not a fan of hiding screws, generally speaking. Not, not too serviceable friendly in that manner. It'd be nice if it was all obvious and easy. Guess you got to pay more for that. We'll just put the cover back on. We'll drop these large work screws back in there. Overall, it's not terrible. It could be easier. It's not terrible. Build quality looks excellent, by the way. Well, the plastic is a little bit thin. You know, we'd all want a metal case, but these things only have a lifespan of a few, what, 10 years, maybe? And then it's all going to be e-waste. Maybe a 
metal case would be more environmentally friendly or I don't know. Certainly would add to the cost. And it's not like we're playing football with it. At least I'd hope you're not. That makes me nervous. <laughs> These screws just seem to want to keep turning. You don't want to over tighten. You can also crack the plastic if you over tighten and they're self tappers. So what I would say is the minute that screw gives you some resistance and doesn't want to move forward, don't, don't torque it down. Just let it go till it stops and don't take it any further than that. It's not like it's got to be watertight, you know what I mean? But you don't want it so loose that it rattles or the screws fall out either. So just make it them snug and then we should be done with all of these tools. Let me clear my work area and we'll get this thing hooked up, powered on and see what it looks like, how it performs. I will tell you right now, spoiler alert, I love it. I absolutely love it. Our USB-C power is there. I have to plug it in here and plug HDMI into it here. And plug our internet into it. Uh, two and a half gig, please. Thank you very little. Then I need a keyboard and mouse, and we're ready to fire this bad boy up. I've already done all the updates and the optimizations. Recorded the hard drive performance so we don't have to sit and wait. We have two USB 3 ports up front. That's a waste to use for your keyboard or mouse. That's what these USB 2 ports are for. Okay, now I'm going to switch over to my HDMI input. And I'll put myself in a corner. You know the routine. And power button. Now, as you can see, just like the photo, it's all nice and pretty. And since it's Valentine's Day, they'll just make it red, like a heart. And I'll, oh, wait a minute, that's still cycling. <laughs> there, now it's red. And you saw how fast that boot up time was, right? Can you hear it? I'm in front of it and I don't even hear it. Now, granted, it's idle, but nonetheless, you would hope that all computers would be silent and idle, but you should know as well as I do, that's not always the case. That giant fan, that's genius. Okay, so let's take a look at our system properties and some of the results that I've tested from earlier. So if we look at, uh, why my icons are at a weird resolution or what? Let's just uh, sort by name. There we go. Now everything's makes my OCD happier. We'll come down here, right click and go to system. And we can verify that we have an AMD Ryzen 7 7840HS with Radeon 780M graphics. It's pretty impressive. That's RDNA 3, isn't it? 780M? Mixing that up. We have 32 gigs of installed RAM. 31.3 gig is usable. What happened to the rest of it? Our video card that's built into the CPU is borrowing some of our RAM. It came with Windows 11 Pro 22H2. I went ahead and did the update to 23H2 just because. And um, if we go into, move that over. If we go into the device manager, close this out, right click on the start button, device manager, you'll see that, you know, we have our security device. That's for Windows 11 compatibility requirements. When we look under our networking adapters, just if you're curious who makes them, we have, uh, I gotta walk up closer to the screen. We have a uh, Intel Wi-Fi adapter, it's the AX200. We also have an Intel Ethernet controller, that's the I226V, that's the two and a half gig LAN connector. And we also have a Realtek one gig PCIe GBE, G uh, gigabit Ethernet connector. So, you get a little of both. So if you want to run a version of Linux, 
and it doesn't like one of those adapters, it'll likely be fine with the other one. Ideally, it'll be it'll have no issues with either one as far as having drivers available for you if you wanted something other than Windows on this. That shouldn't be a problem. Now, um, drive performance on Crystal Disk Mark wasn't rocket ship like because that's going to cost more money. And so the manufacturers, you know, they they got to play a delicate balance between capacity, performance and price. But we're looking at Gen 4 speeds. Gen 4 is anything from 3600 up to 7400. If your read speeds are falling in that um in that range, you're Gen 4. Uh Gen 3 will be 3600 or less. Now we have Gen 5 which will be Anything over 7,500 to 15,000. I don't think the 15,000 are out yet. But by the end of the year, they're, they're slowly, you know, when Gen 3 came out, none of them ran at 3,600. Not for the first year. Same with Gen 4. When they first came out, they weren't hitting 7,300 or 7,400. And likewise with Gen 5, it's pretty new. So give it a year. Right now, a lot of the drives are 10,000, which to me is not worth it. I make sure I get the drives that are 12,400. That's nearly double. But each generation should be double at maximum of the previous gen. So it's not rocket science to know what's coming or what to expect based on what you have. Always doubles. Always doubles. Okay, so let's close that out. And let me go back full screen over here on camera one. And let me cut the lights so you can get an idea of the RGB. So here I've got it red. Of course, it's facing me. It should be facing you for the writing to be oriented the right way around. And then you'll see there's a little LED coming out of the sides there too. And if we cycle through by pushing the button up here on the front opposite of the power button, we can choose different static colors, meaning the colors stay, they don't change, they don't fade. And you get a, a few choices there to the point of turning it off entirely. Say you've got it in a bedroom or something, or maybe an office and you don't want it to be so gaudy. You don't have to mess with any software. Uh, the first push is the default setting, which is just the neat, neat little rainbow effect. Second push there, which I thought was red, is actually just fading in and out, cycling through the colors. And then you go through your static colors at that point. So you don't have a thousand choices to get through here. It's all relatively pretty straightforward. The problem when you give customers too many choices is they have paralysis analysis and they can't make a decision. So I can appreciate that these predefined settings are there for you to pick from. And it's not, a, you know, a thousand things. We've seen some where I've cycled through pushing the button over and over and over and having to cycle through like 50 different things before getting back to the one I wanted <laughs> sucks. But, you know, uh, you can turn it off entirely and then you don't have to make any decision at all. That's why, you know, it's another way of the RGB to me is just a waste of, waste of money and time. But it really looks cool. And it performs super, super well. And it's quiet. And it's reasonably priced when you consider just how much power, and specifically this model, how much RAM and storage you're getting right out of the gate. As I mentioned, there are three manufacturers that brand, I wanna say manufacturers. There are three companies that brand this. I don't know who the actual manufacturer is, but I don't care. It appears to be quality, it runs well, it looks amazing. It doesn't look like every other little square box mini PC out there. And the kind of like this idea that multiple companies can offer it because that means you have a choice as a consumer that if you like that design, but you don't like that company or that company charges too much or that company's support is bad or that company's shipping is going to take too long that you can essentially get the same box from another company you like better for whatever reason. Maybe this company is sold out of it. Maybe this company is in your country and they have the units available to ship to you and you're gonna get it a lot faster than if it, than if it has to come from another continent, go through customs. 
Uh, maybe the price is more aggressive. Maybe the support is better, what have you. But I want to thank the folks at Geek Buying for sending this to us for review. I really like it a lot, like a lot. That has got my style written all over it. Do you guys have any questions or concerns? Do you not like it? I mean, you can give me your feedback in the chat and then we will probably wrap up today's video because we're, we're about 90 minutes in and I like to keep these at, at around a two hours or below two hour mark. So I'm going to see what I've been missing here in the chat. Rip City Raider renews his membership. He's now a member for 11 months. Very awesome. Thank you, Rip City Raider. He says, thanks, Carrie. I love your insight and knowledge. One more month for the new badge. Yeah, 12 months, your six badge will turn to a 12. Mark Gaines with a 10 pound contribution says, hey, that's a nice little PC, Carrie. Well, I'm glad you agree. Remember, I'm not, if you choose to buy this or not buy this, it doesn't make any difference financially to me. I'm not going to benefit. I'm, I'm just simply telling you, I think it's cool. <laughs> I want you to know it exists. I want you to know that there are multiple brands that you can choose from that are effectively all the same exact thing, just branded differently. And in fact, this really doesn't have any branding on it at all other than that sticker in the back. Other manufacturers may brand it differently. But other than that, you know, know that you have choices. Also know that I am blocking one of the cooling vents by setting it up on its side. I just realized that. Um, yeah, so if you have any other questions, concerns, or thoughts, please let me know in the chat room. Construction says he's not a fan of mini PCs, but he loves your content. Well, you know, that's why we have a variety of content. You can't please everybody. So we'll, we do some routers, we'll do some builds, we'll do some repairs. We'll do mini PCs and not so mini PCs and yeah, NAS devices. So that way, uh, you know, my goal has never been to try and make content that everyone will universally like, but at the same time, it's not to make the same content. So I'm always trying to find variety and sort of categories that keep me in my lane. <laughs> Gary McGraw says it's pretty. Sherry McFarland says, hey, thank you for showing that, Kerry. It's a cool little mini PC. And I don't, think, I don't think we're really talking about the performance of this and the fact that you could play AAA titles on this mini PC at moderate settings. You'd be just fine. And if you're curious, um, you can certainly find probably this model um, and Ace Magic's versions of this being reviewed by other YouTube content creators here who might go through some of the games. I mean, I personally, unless it's a game you play and it's settings you like, I don't know how, how much that really tells you, but do know that I'm likely well, the, like the SZ box, which is the one I showed, I think I'm the only legitimate YouTube content creator that has made a video on that. But this is essentially the same thing from Geek Buying, and Geek Buying may have sent this to other reviewers. And if not, Ace Magic's got it. You, and if you watch those reviews, they should all be pretty much reviewing the same hardware if you want that kind of information. John Swisher wants to know, uh, Ryzen 7840HS is equivalent to what Intel chip? Uh, a fair question. I can Google that. Let's see. Generally, a Ryzen 7 is going to be uh, directly competing with an Intel i7, but specifically which model? Let's see. It's a Ryzen 7. What did we say it was? 7840HS. Intel equivalent. Looks like 13700H. Yeah, it's, it's no slouch. Let me go over to um, window capture. 
you can see they did the Intel Core i7 13.7H versus the, the Ryzen 7 7840HS. And you can see the difference in single core and multi-core performance. The 13.7H has six more physical cores and has a larger L3 cache and a newer PCI Express version. But the 7840 has a more powerful Radeon 780M integrated graphics. So if you're a gamer, that's going to do much, much better than Intel. It supports up to 256 gigs of RAM, but we, we couldn't hit that, right? But DDR5, what's the biggest modules we can get? 96? I mean, 48? So 96. I don't know how you get to 256 on that in a, on a mini, you know, on a portable machine that the 7840 is designed to be in. It's got a more modern manufacturing process. So it's uh, four nanometers in the process instead of Intel's 10. It's got a 2% higher turbo boost frequency. It'll run at 5.1, where Intel will only hit five on the 13700. I don't know that that's a, I don't know, would you say that's equivalent? Because the price on this, I'm pretty sure is, is higher. But if I was in it, Strictly business-wise, I suppose I'd want the Intel. Depends on the business. I think uh, for most home consumer use, either one of these is going to impress you. Cinebench results are here. Single core comparison, multi-core, they're pretty darn close. I guess the 13700A should be about right. Good question. Martin says the AMD chip has an AI core. How much is it? Well, again, we can go back to the manufacturer's site. They do offer different colors and different, some, the different amounts of RAM and storage. And of course, there's different brands and they're all going to compete on the price. But you're looking anywhere from about $550 to $700. So let me just go back to the site one more time over there at geekbuying.com. screen sharing. So if we look, uh, this one is the 16 gigs and 512 version, right? We have the 32 gig, one terabyte version. We've got 589. We've got 10% off. That's going to be about 60 bucks. That brings it down to about, around about $500. And if you wanted in, uh, in white, you can buy it in the white case instead. And the price does change a little bit for the white case from this brander. Be careful that you select the right power plug for European or US. Those are apparently the only two that this brand is supporting. You can look on Amazon for Cyberpunk Mini PC or AliExpress for Cyberpunk Mini PC if you want to shop around. Google Cyberpunk Mini PC and hit the shopping tab and see what your options are from other manufacturers and other sources. But Geek Buying has a lot of stuff, not just mini PCs. They've, they're pretty aggressive with their coupon codes. Uh, they ship quickly and they accept PayPal. And if you use PayPal, you get an additional 2.5% discount. So that's why I say asking the prices. It's, there's not just kind of one blanket price. It's sort of depending on how you want to spec it, what color, and uh, how you're going to pay and what coupon codes are available at the time of purchase and whether or not you use them. Back to camera one. And uh, thank you for your questions. Doman says the USB-C connector for a big power supply make me a little uneasy. Well, that's just because you're not used to it. 
USB-C is going to be the new power supply standard on the new Galaxy Book 3 from Samsung. Um, it's bigger than this. Let me, let me grab it and I'll show you. Like physically, it's not as big, but power-wise, it produces more power. And if there's anything to be nervous about, it's, you know, how hot is that going to get? But with the Galaxy Book 3, I think it's 130 watts, whereas this is just 100 watts. But remember, the laptop has to power a monitor. And, you know, monitors are big power eaters. But this is the Samsung USB-C brick. So whether you like it or not, this is what the industry is moving to. And there's been no stories of any fires or anything. Usually fires are caused by batteries. Um, I can't see any reason why anybody should be anything but welcoming to this because you can plug it in one of two ways. It's universal in the sense that you could, in theory, go on vacation and take one big power adapter and power everything, your cell phone, recharge everything. I think it's something that should be embraced and not pushed away, but that's my perspective. I am generally a big fan of watching the evolution of technology. I am not a big fan of saying, oh, it used to be better. I think things are getting better. The technology is getting better, faster, cheaper, more available. Everybody can afford it now versus in the 80s. And even if you could afford it, people in the 80s are like, what do you have a computer for? What do you use with, what do you do with it? Right now, look at how the world has changed. I personally think that's for the better. Of course, I'm in the business of fixing them, so I might be a little biased on that. But I, I wish, I wish everything I had to plug in was all USB-C. I've got room lamps that run off USB-C that Amazon sells. Big, really cool artistic room lamps where the room does not have a, a light in the ceiling and you have, a, you have to plug in a lamp. And it plugs into a USB-C. I think that's awesome. You never know. You'd never know what the connector type is. And, you know, I always warn when people don't label their power adapters and you plug the wrong power adapter into the, to a device it's not designed for, it'll often burn your device up. That will never happen with USB-C. It's so much better. But, you know, it is what it is. Greedy Everything contributes $5 and Super Chat. He says, I believe you missed my Super Chat earlier at 12.13. Oh, before the show. Oh, 13 minutes after the show started. I apologize for that. Let me, let me go back because I was focused so much on what I was doing. I, yeah, I always want to give those shout outs. And if I didn't give you one, you know, please let me know. It's not intentional. Let's see. Uh, thanks again to Les Stevenson and Paul O'Brien and Planet Cryos for their super chats. The Kingsman and Davis Parsons. Uh, 3D Everything contributed a $10 super chat. Thank you for that. So I guess I read Davis Parsons and I read Randy Wobolski, Rab but I skipped over 3D Everything. Uh, did I do that? My apologies. Thank you again to uh, Douglas Burchell. And again, Planet Cryos with a second super chat. And our friend Mark Gaines there in Northern Ireland. And again, from 3D Everything. And to Rip City Raider for renewing their membership. You guys rock. Let me uh, check the phone. Douglas Burchell says, now they have outlets with USB-C. Oh, they've had that a long time. Um, here at Studio B, one of the things I did is there's an outlet on the kitchen um, island. And I pulled that outlet and replaced it with one that has USB-C right into it. So all you need, sorry, not USB-C, it's USB type A. And now I guess you're saying they're type C now. Gotcha. What what I would do is get a Type A to Type C cable because I'm just using it for charging. It's not a big deal, right? It's when you want to transfer data that the cables can get pricey and sensitive if they're going to work. But yeah, the outlet I have right on the kitchen island has the two. It has two regular, you know, USA standard outlets, and then on each side it's got a USB Type A, strictly for charging things. It's pretty neat. 
Now, of course, you don't have to pull your outlets if you're not an electrician or you're nervous about working with electricity. They also have uh, surge protectors that you can plug in, such as this one I have right here. That's got USB on each side of it as well. And then they have also uh, the power splitters or surge protectors that plug straight onto the outlet. They just kind of stick out from the wall that also give you uh, USB charging. Whether or not that's going to provide you with enough power, you know, you have to watch for that on the device. But in most cases, it, it should be plenty. Let's see what else we got going on here. Bajin Guy says an Intel Core i7 12700K with an MSI Z690A Pro Wi Fi DDR4, G Skill Rip Jaws, 16 gigs of 3200 for $329. New or used? So if you're getting a CPU, a motherboard, and RAM, the RAM is probably $50. The motherboard would be $200 by itself. And that CPU is probably $200. So I'm going to I want to go with yeah, that sounds like a good buy. But you're going to have to aggressively cool that 12700K. And of course, if you're a gamer, you might want to get a discrete graphics card rather than using Intel's onboard graphics. They're nowhere near as good as the AMD's current uh, 780 and 760M Radeon stuff. David says, if only they could put a fully powered 4090 GPU in that size of a computer. Well, you could quadruple the price and likely the size. Be careful what you wish for. Bull142 says, hey, Carrie, another good show. Hey, thank you, Bull142 and Gil Garcia. Yeah, Bajan guy says that's new. Is that like a new egg deal or a micro center combo or something? I think that's a, that's a good price, yeah. If you're getting those components, like I say, that just price it out yourself. Look how much, just go to Amazon. Look how much that motherboard sells for. In fact, you can just add it to your cart, add that CPU to your cart, and add that RAM to your cart and see what your cart totals. And then you tell me if that's a good price. And of course, you can delete the items out of your cart. You can just do this just to, so you don't have to write it down. You know, just let Amazon add it up for you. Imagine Guy says it's a micro center combo. Almost all the micro center combos, they offer them on a regular basis. They're almost always a good deal. I don't have a micro center near me, but I'm constantly getting emails every single day about the latest micro center combo. They, there doesn't seem to be a day that goes by that they don't have one, if not three. And so um, everyone I've seen so far is unquestionably a, a savings if those are the parts you want. You're, being, you know, you're having your RAM and your motherboard decided for you. Or in this case, even the CPU is being decided for. And if you're okay with all of that, you know, it's a good price. But does that mean there's not a better price or a better savings on a different model, a different combo? There's always another one, right? So it's really about what are your needs and your budget and will this meet them? So only you can really decide if it's a good price in the sense of will it accomplish what you want it to accomplish? But those are good parts and it's a good price and that's definitely an eight-year build you just might have a little challenge on the cooling side of things but nothing a nice cooler won't take care of a stock cooler isn't going to cut and the kcpus don't come with coolers anyway does micro center ship usually whenever you see combo deals they are in store only and what that means is if you live in an area with multiple micro centers, you might have to go from store to store if they're sold out. It's a way to get people in the store. So I'm not familiar with what their inventory status per store is like, 
but most of these deals, they're going to say they're in store only with Micro Center. So whether or not they shift is irrelevant. Badging guy says, I'll need a good LGA 1700 cooler. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Be Quiet's got some nice coolers out there that will, that'll tackle that 12700K. You know, do a little research online and see what other people are using. I find Reddit to be a great source. So if you say, best cooler 12900K Reddit, see what people are saying. And then, you know, weigh that information and uh, judge for yourself. Dr. Dre said, will it include a power supply? No, it literally includes only what it says. So these combos, usually, whether it's Newegg or Micro Center, they're usually CPU motherboard RAM. That's usually all it is. It's up to you to find your own case, your own storage, your own operating system, your own power supply. If you want Wi-Fi and the board doesn't have it built in, that's separate, all of that stuff. So there's no way for them to really include a power supply without knowing whether or not you're going to add a graphics card. You might end up buying an underpowered power supply as part of the combo. And, you know, Newegg was doing this unscrupulously during the pandemic where they were taking some crappy power supplies that they were having trouble selling and saying, if you want to buy this hard to get graphics card, you also have to buy this power supply. It's, that was a low, I don't know, in my opinion, I thought that was a scummy thing to do to people because they were, it was inventory that was just not selling. And there's a reason why it wasn't selling. Nobody wanted it. So they said, well, if everybody wants the graphics card and nobody wants the power supply, then the only way you can buy this is if you also buy that. In general, when it comes to things like a CPU and a motherboard, or even RAM for that matter, it's not a big deal uh, to, for that to not be enough for a person. But when it comes to a power supply, the power supply may not be enough, depending on how the person's going to build the system. There's no way to know what they're going to need. Um, there's also no way to know if they're going to want to build in a bigger case or a little case, a white case or a black case, RGB or no RGB, window or no window, uh, how many drives it can hold. That's up to the individual. That's the idea behind the idea behind building your own system is making those decisions. And if you don't want to make those decisions, just go buy a pre-built, you know, pick a side is all I'm saying. David Graham says Amazon has micro center combos. Can you share a link to one? Can you show me? I've never seen that before. I guess I can take a look while I'm waiting for your response. I don't know. You're here and take It's news to me. Amazon charges a fee, so I can't see how a micro, micro center would offer it at the same price. I would think any micro center combos would be marked up a little bit higher to cover the Amazon fees, but maybe I'm wrong. Let me share the screen with you. There are, in fact, Microsoft, I'm sorry, micro center combos on Amazon. I've never seen that before. But hey, Amazon's a big place, so. Here we go. Here's what's currently available. We've got a uh, Ryzen 7 5700X with a motherboard. That's it, just those two parts, 400 bucks. Again, chip and motherboard, no RAM, 400 bucks. Chip and motherboard, no RAM, 240. Anything that says Inland, that's, that's gonna be your Micro Center brand. I'm seeing motherboard and chip combos, but I don't see them like these kind of combos. I don't know. In my mind, I think of a combo as being three things, <laughs> but that's because I'm accustomed to that's what I see from Newegg and Micro Center. So it looks like this particular deal and similar deals that include the RAM are in store only 
And while they are uh, offering some combos on Amazon, they might be cheaper in store for the same combo, and they could even have a better combo for less money in store. So I think you'd be better off just buying from Amazon at that rate because your savings isn't going to be great here. I mean, if we pick one of these randomly, here's an, a Ryzen 7 7700X with this MSI Pro B650 is $600. Is that a good price? Well, an AMD Ryzen 7 7700X, AMD How much does that sell for if you were to buy it from Amazon directly? It's a $300 chip, right? No cooler. Let's just call it 300 bucks. And in the motherboard, they're adding to that is an MSI Pro B650P Wi-Fi. Let's see if I can cheat a little. Copy that here and paste it. Cut this excess stuff off the end. So we're at 300 and MSI Pro B650. So this is $20 cheaper to buy it direct from Amazon than to buy the Micro Center combo. And likely Micro Center is paying around a $20 fee to Amazon. And so from Micro Center's perspective, it's, it's the same profit, it's the same cost. So it's cheaper for you. That's why you should shop around. Don't just assume that you see a combo and it's a good deal, especially if you're not buying it direct from the seller. If the seller is selling it on eBay or Amazon, there are commissions that have to get paid versus if they sell it directly, then they can sell it for less. That's why Amazon can sell you these parts less and ship them than Micro Center can. But there may be exceptions. There may be a combo there where Micro Center does beat it, but I would think that's not likely. In most cases, I would assume the deal from Amazon will be better. But, uh, you know, do your own research and you have a preference from who you want to buy from. Maybe you don't want to Give Amazon your money, but that doesn't make any sense because you're still buying it from Amazon, even if it's being supplied by Micro Center. You know, don't get too excited over these deals. It's like walking through Costco. Not everything is a better deal inside of Costco. I've seen items cheaper at Walmart or Walgreens, quite frankly. But overall, most things in the store are. These, these Micro Center... Um, Combos are to get you into the store. So they're more aggressively priced than anything online. I can't, I don't order from my Micro Center because there's no good deals there for me. Everything I need, I can get cheaper and faster ordering for direct from Amazon or Newegg. There's no point in me ordering from Micro Center whose inventory is lower and in general prices are higher when it comes to online ordering. The in-store only coupon deals, however, are often much, much better than offers from Amazon and Newegg. Because you've got to remember, they've got a box to pay for and they have shipping to pay for. So if you're going to go and pick it up, there's all of that expense gone. That's not free. You know, when I ship a, a full-size 40-pound computer, it's on average, it's over $100 to ship across the country. Now, Amazon, obviously, and Newegg, they don't pay that kind of money. Micro Center, on the other hand, isn't as big. So they're going to have Amazon do it for them, and they're going to have to pay Amazon for the box and the packing and the shipping. It's all part of a commission. So it makes sense that if you have a Micro Center store next to you or near you, that when you go there and shop in store, the prices will be, on some items like these combos, will be cheaper in store only for those reasons. Also, they get you in the store. And so while you're there, you might pick up something you weren't planning on. Good old business 101 right there, my friends. Jim KJ3N said he's got a micro center in Pennsylvania that's about 30 minute drive from him. And he, he's been there twice in the last 10 years. He still prefers going to Amazon and Newegg. 
Plus you've got Pennsylvania sales tax and gas. Well, you're going to have that same sales tax from Amazon and Newegg, right? But he says the gas burned up and the time involved usually negates going. And then David provided the link. Thank you, David. So there you go. Don't assume when something's on sale that it's actually a sale price. I get better deals throughout the year than I see during Black Friday. And I'm not competing with a bunch of people all looking for deals. Everybody's looking for something on Black Friday. They're shopping and they're ready to spend. That's a terrible time to buy because if there is a good deal, it's snapped up. And what I find fascinating are, say those Apple uh, Pro Max headphones, they're like 550 bucks. They were, my, my nephew was showing his to me and I was like, wow, these sound really good. How much are they? <laughs> $550, oh, they don't sound that good. But he goes, yeah, they go on sale on Amazon at 450, right? So I look and sure enough, just like he said, Amazon dropped it to 449. And then they had somebody returned a pair and then the return pair was knocked down to 300. It's like, oh, 300 bucks, plus it's from Amazon Warehouse. I can return them if there's anything wrong with them. I ordered them. But there was plenty to order brand new at 449. And this was just prior to Black Friday. So this was like a week before. And then Black Friday hits, sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out, all the way down, every color, every version, <laughs> at every price, gone. But they were just sitting there being ignored. So uh, I, I think I got a better price. Uh, they're like brand new. They sound great. You don't have to have an Apple device to use them. And they sound amazing. And for 300 bucks, I still feel like I paid a little too much. 250 probably would be a fair price, but it's Apple. So, you know, if you're bargain shopping, <laughs> don't be looking at Apple. All right. I think that'll wrap it up for me for today. Claudio says he's got a Morphine M8S Mini. He loves it. It's very fast and small, and he can even play Call of Duty 2 with max specs. Oh, sure, older games, um, pretty lightweight. You know, the, the newest games, your Microsoft Flight Simulator, for example, is pretty intense. Uh, Starfield can be pretty intense. But, um, you know, it depends on the games you play. Some games are just going to run better than others, and the resolutions and frame rates you want to play at, which often vary based on what size screen you're using or Maybe you're using dual or triple screen. So it all depends on the individual. So I try and provide you the information, but I don't tell you what to do, right? It's just like, this is the information that you should need to make the right decision that's right for you. For price, expectations, noise, expandability, size, weight, um, warranty, support, oh, the way it looks, all these factors, what operating system it comes with, all that stuff. And then you take that information and do with it whatever you want. But ideally, what I'm trying to help you with is avoiding buyer's remorse. And if you're not certain about anything, I always recommend find what you're looking for at Amazon with those 30-day returns. And that way you can return anything you purchase for the most part when Amazon's selling it for free for any reason for 30 days. That's very generous. Like if you don't know if you want it within the first two weeks, I don't know why you need 30 days. But it's a little tip from your Uncle Kerry. Uh, let me check the phone real quick and then we'll wrap things up. I have not checked the, the phone all, all day. So let me see if I've missed anything from you guys. Um, let's see, somebody emailed me a question, which it looks like Mara has already responded to. Our friend Netfreak sent, Netfreak sent a $5 Amazon gift card. He says, Carrie and Mara get something to drink and cool off in the desert. Thanks for sharing your time and knowledge. We're in the 70s this week. It's actually quite nice, but thank you. Frankie B sent a very generous Amazon gift card. He says, here's a little something to help you out. Frankie B, you've done it again. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much. Um, I think that catches us up. Now, I think I will be live tomorrow. 
pretty sure. I will definitely be live on Friday as I always am. And we've got a build coming up on Friday and I've got a choice of about four and I'm not sure which one I want to do. And I'm not sure if Mitch will join us or not. I'm waiting to hear back from him. So I'll have more information on that, but there will be a build one way or another. With or without Mitch, it may be AMD, it may be Intel. I'm trying to make up my mind. Um, I won't be using the 8000 series chip, I'll tell you that. Um, but that will be Friday at my normal time, 12 p.m. Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern time. And then tomorrow, if I go live, it will be at the regular time. I just have to, there's, there's one little thing I'm waiting on. And if it shows up early, we're great. We're good to go. Uh, if it doesn't, I might want to wait. I'm not sure. I don't know yet. So make sure you're subscribed. Hit the like button if you like this content and you want to see more like it. Thank you again to the folks over at Geek Buying for sending us this PC for review. I love it. It's one of my favorites. And I, I can't get over how quiet it is. And I can't get over how unique it looks. And I can't get over how well it performs. It's crazy. You know, try and put together a system with a motherboard, a processor of equivalent power, that amount of RAM and storage with a case, a power supply and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and an operating system. Just use PC part picker and see what your price comes to and then see what they're selling this for. And you tell me which one's the better deal. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for me for today. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for being those of you that are members. Thank you for being members or if you're contributing in Super Chats, thank you guys so much for helping to keep us independent. Another super shout out to our friend Frankie B. Our friend Buster in Scotland, these guys are really making it happen here for us. And we can't thank you enough on behalf of the entire community, your generosity. Thank you again to Acronis, Roboform, VIP CDK deals, and Instant House Call. These are actual products I use in my business, and we're so glad to have their support here. If you've never tried them, just give them a shot. Before you make up your mind, just give them a shot. And when you see what they can do, I think you'll be impressed with how little they charge, especially when you get that coupon code specifically for you guys. That'll wrap it up for me for today. I will see you all very, very soon. And uh, oh, and a shout out, of course, to Tamara for all the hard work she's doing here with the thumbnails and the video notes. And I hope you guys all enjoy the rest of your Valentine's Day or Singles Awareness Day, SAD, whichever it is for you. I will see you all very, very soon. And until next time, bye for now.